Josh Reed in the dark hammer with red trim. Touch of gloves and we're underway. It's going to be interesting to see how quickly the takedown attempt comes, Dan, because you know it's coming from a guy with those kind of wrestling credentials. But something to probably keep in mind here with, uh, with Josh Reed. He's known for these crazy wild brawls and fights, but six wins by submission on his record. You know, normally, Dan, when you talk about wrestlers coming into MMA, they're usually based in freestyle or based in Greco-Roman. So a guy with two very different styles, that's going to give him plenty more options, right? Yeah, absolutely. And just when we talk about wrestlers, you know, you're not looking at someone who is a good wrestler in MMA. This is someone who is trained specifically in wrestling and is well cred credentialed outside of MMA and wrestling. So it brings a very different style. And uh, a lot of people aren't used to, to actually grappling against a true, pure wrestler. Zan looking like he's more than happy to trade shots to the feet with the crazy horse here as well. Well, you know, I think part of this is he may expect his opponent to expect him to immediately run out and shoot a takedown, and actually he wants to allow his opponent to get quite comfortable and then maybe uh, forget so much that he's going to shoot in just like that onto a single leg. And now we get to see some of that wrestling background taking the legs from underneath his opponent straight away, immediately jumping on the back here. Drag, yeah, go on. yeah, dragging his man to the ground here. Josh doing a great job of trying to stay back on his feet, but you can see how aggressively Dylan is attacking this clinch position here. He's got the hands locked. You know, it, it's very tempting when you're in this position to pick your opponent up and slam him back down, but what you actually want to be looking for here is the subtle movement, the switches to the legs. You see how that leg is coming around and taking out the base leg of his opponent. These are the subtle changes that you see from high-level wrestlers. Zan, absolutely relentless here against that crazy horse, taking the base out from underneath him. Yeah, Josh is doing a good job of not allowing Dylan to get to a very strong position here. You know, he's in the turtle position. It's not a great position, but he's not allowing his opponent to advance that. First hook comes in for a possible back attempt here. Reed's right in front of his own corner there, of course, head coach of Shaw MMA, Richard Shaw. And we've seen him be so instrumental in the careers of many fighters that have come through Cage Warriors. The likes of, of course, Jack Marshman, Chris Edwards, of course, his son, Jack. Yeah, Dylan doing a really good job of keeping very tight control here and then picking those powerful shots from that clinch position at the same time. And that's really what you want to be doing, especially in the first round is sort of wearing on your opponent, you know, dominating him in the grappling, but also throwing some strikes in there as well. But Josh doing a fantastic job of, of continuing, you know, being patient, looking for the opportunity and just doing what he has to do to not give up a position like the back and to not be put onto his back. He's been active with the elbows as well, so he's definitely keeping Dylan Hazan guessing, but you've got to believe as well that Reed assumed he would be in this position at some point in this fight, so... Yeah, absolutely, and he looks really well prepared for what he's facing right now. He's being very efficient here. Very rarely do you see the person attacking the takedown actually with such a higher output level than the person defending. So Josh Reed is just effectively defending takedowns. Even there, as, as, as he gets put on his back, immediately turn into the turtle position. He's making sure he knows where that fence is so he can use it to stop Dylan from being able to come around to the back. He's, he's defending these positions very efficiently, which is going to make a big difference if it goes into later rounds. Another back attempt uh, here. Very nice strike from Dylan. You know, he keeps on switching between this uh, this sort of standing turtle position and he'll slide a hook in and he'll think about going for the back. 
what he really wants to be doing if you you know you know the most effective way from here is either to do what he just thought about for a second there which is to attack the neck initially but if you're going to get a single hook in if dylan can get the far side hook in the hook closest to the fence well then the near side is going to be much easier so now just as we we sort of get to the end of the round he finally manages to almost get both hooks in here you know, a, a, a very strong performance in the first round from Dylan Hazan, but Josh Reed doing everything he needs to to defend. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's his first time on a big show for Dylan Hazan like this, under the bright lights. And, you know, sometimes we see guys falter. We, you know, we see them buckle under the pressure, but that's not happened here at all. Yeah, here's that shot, and it's a beautiful uh, double leg switch to a single. And then you'll see the, the base being removed with that beautiful picking up on the near leg and then sweeping the far leg here. And it's kind of similar to what happened for the re remainder of the round, which was Hazan was continually trying to get that takedown. He was thinking about the back at times, but Josh Reed doing a really good job of not allowing any advancing of those grappling positions. And this is the key thing for me. Hazan is actually doing things with the position here. You know, we talk about does a takedown score? Well, not in and of itself, no, unless it's a big slam that does damage. It's what's done with the takedown. Does the fighter use the takedown to land shots, to put him himself, put himself to good positions where he can get submission holds going? And that's what we saw with Dylan. He did just enough there to make those takedowns count. So a round on the scorecards for Dylan Hazan in my book. Never count out the crazy horse Josh Reed, though. And you know that round does have that, even though, you know, I totally agree with you, I think that first round definitely goes to Dylan Kazan, but you've got to think that there's some confidence from uh, Josh Reed as well, knowing that even if his man's got him against the fence for the majority of the round, he's got him in this clinch position, he wasn't able to really put him, put him in any danger. So a bit of confidence for both guys there. Again, you know, you know, Hazan's obviously very early in his career and, and the level of opposition he's faced thus far hasn't been as high as the crazy horse. So has he been in there with someone who can take his best in a round like that and then come back at him like we know the horse can? Yeah. Ooh, nice overhand right there. And, and, he, and he's setting these up with these big steps and he's almost reaching with the other hand here. He's faking a takedown and then throwing that big overhand right. Corner of Josh Reed there, calling for a bit more work with the jab. Oh, beautiful leg kick from Crazy Horse. And that's left a big red welt on the car for Dylan Hazan. This could be Josh Reed's way back into this fight. Yeah, Reed definitely looking like he's starting to increase the pressure a little bit here. Great to see a fighter respond so accurately to the instructions from the coaches. That's exactly what we saw from Reed. Yeah, beautiful um, shot in here from uh, Dylan Hazan. Very nicely defended and sprawled on by Josh Reed. Now that was interesting because it was far away from the fence. Usually, when you have a good wrestler on your leg in the middle of the cage, there it's very hard to defend against. But Josh doing a very good job. So I can feel the confidence increasing in this young man. Nice straight right, great level change there from. Dylan Hazan though. Yeah, he's in on a, on a single leg and Josh looking to lock up a Kimura grip there. He felt for a second losing a bit of balance, doing a good job of redirecting himself to the fence here. He had so much success in that first round defending these takedowns from this exact position. I imagine that he's quite comfortable here, but he doesn't want to get stuck in that same pattern that he was in the first round. He doesn't want to stay here for the next two and a half minutes. Reed landed some nice elbows when they were on the ground there and he's continued to do that in this entanglement. And he's warned about grabbing the fence there from Mark Goddard. Yeah, and rightly so, you know, uh, Hazan doing a good job of finally getting Josh's back to the ground. It's going to be interesting now to see if he can keep him there. Again, attacking that back, he's got that near side hook in. He's going to have to do a lot in this last two minutes to tip the round back in his favour, I would think. And a momentary breather there from what's been a frantic couple of minutes of action in the second frame. Been very similar to what we saw in this first round, this back clinch position, using the leg sweep to try and take the legs out, immediately slight in some hooks there, but Reed being able to just shrug those off very, very nicely. 
but it's just relentless pressure and this is what you see from these high level wrestlers we're used to seeing this in MMA where once they get on you you never have room to breathe you may stand up they take you back down you get back to your feet again they're taking the legs out and they're hitting you the entire time well again this is key for me this is what Hassan's doing here he is throwing punches he's making this position count just a minute left to play within this second round. We've got another frame to go, should it get that far? Yeah, very interesting to see that this has become the pattern of this fight so far, especially in the clinch positions. This rear clinch position and Josh Reed just utilizing the uh, total position really effectively. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering what can Dylan do to try and actually open up his opponent a little bit. You know, he's going for these back attacks a little bit and obviously not feeling like they're uh, they're going to be completely successful because he's not really committing to that back attack. You know, I'd put, personally, I'd look to see him switch from that double underhook position on the back. He gets one of those hooks in and he sees an opportunity. He should be actually going for an over-under and using that control on the upper body to pull Josh Reed's upper body backwards to expose the back and possibly look to get a submission from here because, you know, if the, if, if the third round is anything like the first two, we could see much more of this position we've seen so far. Well, this is looking like it might turn in for a turn into a very interesting one for our judges to pick apart. My inclination is that Josh Reed took that second frame, did perhaps the more damaging blows earlier on. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a very, very close round, definitely. Let's take a look at some of the action. It was actually a good overhand right to start things off from doing this answer. Maybe I'm misremembering a little bit here. But the leg kicks from Josh Reed clearly had an effect. So we see this takedown in the center of the uh, cage here. One of two takedowns. And then this is sort of the main story of the fight, which is just Dylan Hazan, uh, Hazan on the back in that clinch position, just doing everything he can to try and get his opponent to the ground. And Josh Reed doing a, doing a fantastic job of being able to stay up on his feet and just defend the back pretty effectively. And referee Mark Goddard just giving a words, uh, word of wisdom there to Josh Reed about holding the fence. And again, that big overhand right from Dylan Hazan to kick things off. Let's see what Reed can do on the feet here. He goes for the kick, it's caught. He takes a shot, and this is exactly where Hazan wants the fight down. Yeah, and expect to see, uh, if he gets the opportunity, expect to see Josh look to try and actually move towards the fence here. He's had so much success defending the back position from the fence. We haven't seen him in this position in the middle of the cage so far, so this could be a very, very different uh, positional exchange to what we've seen in the first couple of rounds into side control here. First time we've really seen a proper top dominant position. And that's the difference that it makes when you're not up against the fence there. Josh doing a good job of going back to total. He's, he's using this total position so effectively. And because, and it could be from that wrestling background, and you see how he tried to get towards the cage there and, uh, and, and Dylan dragged him back to the center. He can feel very, very strong in this position and much more effective when he's away from the fence because Reed is going to use that fence. You see how he's trying to get there? That's the battle now. He's dragging him backwards. It's a fight to see who can get to the better position. This is really smart fight IQ, knowing what he's gone through in the last couple of rounds and, and, and the struggles that he's got to try and uh, uh, break down this position of his opponent to make sure he can't get back to the fence. And then, of course, for Josh Reed to try and get to the fence. But this is what I was talking about. He's using this back clinch position with double underhooks. Now, the, the, the good thing about double underhooks is you get very good control over the person's body, especially their hips. The bad thing about that is that you get no control over the opponent's upper body. So if you want to try and pull them backwards, you're not going to be able to pull them from the upper body. You're only going to be able to pull them from the hips. So if Dylan Hazan wants to open up this position, he wants to be trying to switch to an over-under, a seatbelt control, and trying to open up that upper body, try and get hooks in, and then look to attack the net. Again, Dylan Hazan dragging Reed. Back to the center of the cage. Reed able to power his way to the fence though. Yeah, let's see if he can turn his back to the cage here and break away from Dylan Hazan. He's got just over half the round left. Yeah, and we haven't seen him 
I'd say we haven't seen him do that so far, but we almost haven't seen him try to do that. And I think at this point in the fight, it's a very, very close fight so far. And this is a very, very important round for both guys. So I think at this point, he does need to have a little bit more urgency trying to get out of this position. And what you can do when the person has that back clinch, that double underhooks, is actually just start directly fighting the hands, directly fighting the arms, either trying to split that grip or even possibly going for something like a Kimura from that position. Is it going to be a super high percentage submission? Probably not. But it, what it does, it forces a reaction. You know, Josh Reed doesn't just want to sit in this position with his opponent trying to attack his back for the remainder of this fight. Two minutes left for Josh Reed to find a way out from underneath Dylan Hazan. And this has been a real arduous fight for both men. Don't forget to join in the conversation tonight here at the Trilogy. Use the hashtag CW124. We want to hear all your predictions. We want to hear how you're enjoying the fights, where you're enjoying the fights from, at Cage Warriors on all your social channels. And again, Hazan just dragging Crazy Horse back, back from the cage. One thing to mention, Dan, as well, is that Dylan Hazan has taken this fight on very short notice. So, you know, he's not had a full training camp for this one. And against an experienced, well-seasoned veteran like the Crazy Horse, you know, maybe it's just a case of just, just do enough to survive here rather than trying to go for the finish and risk giving a crafty veteran an opening. Yeah, you know, absolutely. But also, he comes from a wrestling background, and 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 you don't do camps for wrestling. You just you're just a monster all year round, every year. So, you know, he looks in fantastic shape, and he looks very much in control here. I think with a with 50 seconds left on the clock, I think it is time to maybe try and take it up a gear and, and maybe really try and he's he, he's. He's got close to opportunities to take the back, but he's never really pulled the trigger on him. And I think now, 30 seconds left, why not? Why not try and go? If it goes wrong, there's probably nothing too bad that can happen at this point, but might as well go for it. A couple of knees in there is Hazan. Probably the most significant strikes of the round so far. Yeah, this, this entire fight has kind of looked like this, to be honest. You know, this sort of... Uh, Dylan in a very strong position and Josh doing a good job of defending any advancing of that position, but also not really being able to have much offensive reversals of positions, you know, has not been able to get any aggressive grappling off of, off of his own. Well, Hazan looking for the trip, even to the bell there. And I would imagine that's going to be a scorecard victory for the Italian on his Cage Warriors debut. And at short notice against the veteran. A oh, bit of gymnastics in the cage as well there from his hand. Now, if he pulled that off mid-fight, that would have been impressive. See, you know, he's just got a bit too much energy for an end of a fight, you know. I would have liked to see him go a little bit harder. I think he's got, you know, a lot more in the gas tank, but, you know, a, a really strong performance for his Cage Warriors debut. Let's take a look at some of the action. And again, that nice overhand right, which you often see from wrestlers transitioning into MMA. It's uh, the old faithful. Yeah, absolutely. When someone's so worried about you shooting on them, they think about that shot and they end up eating the, uh, the big overhand right. And the story of the round, really, and much of the fight, just this great back control from Dylan Hazan really neutralized the crazy horse. Yeah, and this is something you don't see very often, but it's something that, here we go, some gymnastics at the end there, pretty impressive stuff. But yeah, to see someone so aggressively try and make their way to the fence as the opponent tries to drag them back to the center. Well, I'm sure we'll see Dylan Hazan back on Cage Warriors, as I'm sure we'll see the crazy horse too, but it looks like it's going to be Hazan's night. Let's throw it to our MC in the cage, Mr. Hal Chaplin, to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. Your judges score this contest 30 26, 29 27, and 29 28. In favor of your winner, by way of unanimous decision, in the blue corner, Dylan Hazan. Uh, so he did get that second round on a couple of scorecards, but a well deserved. A victory for Dylan.